Hello to my Sagittarius and happy midweek Wednesday to each and every one of you all. Sagittarius, we are steps away from this last quarter moon phase, right? And last quarter moon phase is where you finish strong. Finish, finish, finish out strong. That's somebody's thoughts are like, you know what? I need to finish out this cycle strong. We had a full moon in Leo, but right before it was in Leo, it was in Cancer. So it was, as it was moving into Cancer, uh, during that full moon phase, that's where you're, you may have felt like your dreams were even more vivid. Um, you may have felt even more sensitive around that time because Cancer is ruled by the moon. So it felt like it was double need for nurturing, right? So that was really intense with, um, you know, even even all of our in, in um, our intuition. So ask yourself these questions. Did you feel when you look at everything that's connected to your universe, everything, whether people are physically still in your life, past memories, all of that, so that you can make room for wealth. This is the year of wealth. And so you can also simultaneously start purging right before Pluto um, goes retrograde in March. Did you feel nurtured, protected, secure, and appreciated? If the answer is no, release it. Just don't even overthink it. Just no matter who it's attached to, release it. Um, the emotion along with the physical reminder of, I didn't feel nurtured, protected, and secure. If it's more complicated than that, like um, there are some good times, but there are some bad times, you know, sit down with a list, put together a list. Does the cons outweigh the pros of being connected to certain people, places, and things? If the answer is yes, that the cons outweigh the bad, outweigh the good by your definition of bad and good, and you can't immediately cut something off and start the healing process, at least demote it. At least say, okay, I need to reduce the amount of access this has to my universe, my mind, so I can start the healing process and I can make room for the very things that I prayed for. So I try to simplify this to help people move forward. We have no control of what's going on outside of your universe. I've already prayed over your cards, um, Sagittarius, and let's see what the answers to those prayers are. All right, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. All right, Sagittarius. First card out of the deck is the Princess of Swords, the Six of Swords, the Six of Wands, the Wheel of the Year, the Ace of Pentacles, and the Death card, right? So it could have something to do with a, a, an air sign, air, um, Aquarius, Gemini, Libra, you know? And so I definitely see somebody saying you're moving on from, you know, some level of disappointment. It, it could have been, something could have been deeply disappointing for you, but I definitely see you back in the saddle moving beyond, like moving forward. Like, okay, I'm moving forward. I'm putting some kind of action to get away from the depth of disappointment connected to people, places, and things. So even if it's not an air sign, remember the element of air connects us with our heart chakra. So that could have even been the depth of disappointment of the end of a friendship, the end of a, um, and you're thinking about rebirth side. This is attached to Scorpio. We're going to get to the question of Scorpio in a second. Anything that has your head and heart at war with each other. That's why I started out the reading, you know, um, Sagittarius with anything where your head and heart are at war with each other. Uh, a lot of people find you a lot of fun to be around that, that fiery energy. You all are like the 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 friend you call when you want to go out and have some fun or like somebody who was like on it like in terms of your ideas like to travel all of those things um so source is saying to you but there's two sides of the sword right and so here we have the wheel of fortune somebody's definitely going to feel like all the time that you put into something is going to come back to you because here we have the ace of pentacles you're going to get back to working really hard ace energy would be like motive what was the motive of me putting time into overthinking some disappointments? What would be, why would I put that much time? And this is a year of wealth. I want to increase my wealth. I increase my wealth of knowledge, you know, about some things. So why do I need to, why do I need to cut into more time? Like asking yourself that, why do I need to cut in more time when I increase my wealth of knowledge on some things? So how am I going to use that to help myself and also to help ultimately help to better mankind? So here we have the Empress card. Somebody's definitely his growth is okay. So the Empress card, the Judgment card came out twice: Ten of Swords, the Seven of Swords, and then also the Fool card. Right? The Empress card. So this is where your creativity is actually growing, right? And so here we have 
the judgment card came out twice. So you're definitely staying away from people's judgment of you, harsh judgment of you in your personal and your professional life, where you are breaking cycles in your personal life and your professional life, right? So you're breaking, you're breaking generational cycles, chains, and curses. And this is a part of the purging process of as you continue to gain your knowledge and wisdom of just kind of like how your family thinks, how they talk about certain things, how they align themselves with things, you're breaking cycles, chains, and curses. So let's say, for instance, here we have the full card. And because um, I see somebody feeling changed, liberated, and free. Ten and also seven of swords, right? So <clears throat> ten of swords. Ten of swords. The number ten is a number for instant manifestation. So source has been trying to tell somebody for the longest time to move on from two types of energies, right? But the more and more someone is... Um, operating under other people's judgment of you, the more the enemy, like, it's just like that, that window of time where you feel like, okay, who are people to judge me? I'm such and such and such and such, and I can judge them, right? So source is saying to you, this number right here, 10 is the number for instant manifestation. So usually with the 10 of swords, the person is lying down with 10 swords in them, right? And it indicates, you know, all the hurt, the pain you've gone through, Judas spirits, people you let get close to you and they hurt you, those kind of things, right? Source is saying to you, you gained enough knowledge and wisdom to say, okay, I need to pull out my sword of truth and I need to go ahead and start cutting some people out of my life. Remember, when you watch this video, the moon may be in Libra moving into Scorpio it, or it could already be in Scorpio. So as the moon moves to zodiac sign every one and a half to two days, you get an opportunity as it's waxing and waning to say, okay, when it moves to a masculine sign, I need to take some kind of action. So as it's in Libra, it's a masculine sign. So I need to take some kind of action to think about this. Um, did something disrupt my peace or did it add to my peace? If it disrupted my peace, I need to get it off of my internal scales. That's Libra, right? But when it moves to a feminine planet and you need to be in receiving mode, uh, Sagittarius, that's where it's like, okay, I need to flush all of this out. These wounded, these unhealthy and wounded emotions. So I can go through this very powerful transformation. So remember, it's only, it's moving through every one and a half to two days. And somebody may say, that's not enough time for me to heal from this sword wound, which is traumatic, but it is enough time for you to journal, to kind of really sit back with your thoughts and say, okay, I need to release this is something I need to work on. This is my homework for self. This is something I need to work on. So I definitely see this zero right here. Somebody, this is closing out a cycle. Like I'm embarking on a whole new journey with the, the knowledge of self that I've gained. I don't want to speak things into existence that I don't want to come back to me, if that makes sense. Here we have the five of pentacles. Here we have the king of swords. Here we also have the nine of pentacles, the world card, the two of swords, and then also the 10 of pentacles, right? The five of pentacles. So somebody is right there at their vault door and sources. I've already approved you to step through your vault door of financial independence and also legacy wealth, right? Your family, right? So it's whether it's you and a spouse, you and a business partner um, creating legacy wealth, you and, you know, your blood relatives creating a legacy wealth, married into whatever you, your kids, legacy, right? What do you want your name to be known for? Not just financially independent because sources said oh, you're already inside your vault door. And so when you're moving towards protecting your legacy, sources saying you're going to have to take the blindfolds off too, so that you can see the burden and blessings coming across your path. Because I feel like when we walk around with blindfolds on, we don't see the burdens coming our way. We don't see the disappointments that's on the horizon. You know, again, somebody is going along with the flow, right? So this is where you step into like open the other aspects of your, your birth chart and start to see, okay, I don't see how I could, I didn't see that coming. I didn't see um, I didn't see, um, I didn't see something that could have been a burden trying to come in my life. Right. Sometimes it's something that's when you, where's the uh, card? Hold on. Here we have the world card. So you definitely, something has definitely been fulfilled, right? So this is uh, somebody feels changed, liberated and free and closed out. Like, so this will be the, the very first card in the major arcana. And this will be the last card. So somebody says, I went from alpha to omega. I went from the rooter to the tutor. I went from the beginning to the end in this thing. And I, I really thought about it. I overthought it to a point I'm gave myself a headache. I need to go ahead and close it out. I need to go ahead and dead a situation, right? 
all the time that you've given to something, overthinking to something, Sagittarius, you're saying, okay, I need to go ahead and close this out. I need to part ways with it because I don't want to carry that on my internal scales because it disrupts my peace. And I'm actually giving power to the very thing that or things that have hurt me in the past, right? So here you are, ended up on your throne of thinking. Somebody's wisdom has wisdom and knowledge of self has increased. So great, great, great Sagittarius. Great, 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 right? Let's see what else we got going on here as we continue to move forward. I'm gonna, don't forget, I'm going to give you the questions for the moon and Scorpio too, just for those of you all who like to write down the questions. So you definitely said I went from top to bottom. There's some things, my head and heart were at war with each other. And now it's time for me to do some serious cleansing here and trying to figure out what do I need to part ways with so I can move forward. Where are the cards? I was looking for these cards right here. Yeah. Um, I need to part ways with anything that can be cutting into my legacy that can be cutting into you on from five, um, could be cutting into your legacy and cutting into anybody else's legacy. So we have the ace of pentacles and the nine of pentacles would be the 10 of pentacles, right? You work too hard on your legacy. Um, and breaking cycles, chains, and curses. It could be you and somebody else, like you and a parent, you and a child. It could be you and a spouse. It could be you and a sibling. Somebody is saying me and somebody have worked too hard on our legacy to break cycles, chains, and curses to let anything overthinking. It's just that little window of time that our demons, right? That that's where um, the devil can tempt you in that little bit of window of time, Sagittarius, where it'll cause you to stay in something with sources. I told you to move on from something a long time ago. Here we also have the five of pentacles. So here you are at the vault door. This is emotional wounding of two situations that source told somebody to walk away from. Two types of situation is being judged by people, harshly judged by people who everybody has operated in the flesh in some way, shape, form, or fashion. So you could feel like somebody's judging you. Okay, let me find out some dirt on them and let me judge them too. Source is saying the best for you is the focus on your legacy. Everybody has a past. That's every single. I'm telling you something, Sagittarius. If people start to, um, if source started to put people's past on a, um, on a movie screen, oh my goodness, the, the people, everybody would be jumping under tables and chairs for real. So source is saying you have a very rich legacy. You and somebody have a very rich legacy that source wants you to focus on. And so that's where your focus is going to be, is getting up from the Ten of Swords and saying, I survived a lot in my life, a lot of harsh judgment of things, and, I'm, and now it's time for me to thrive. So here's the death card that came out. So I'm putting an in. Death card came out twice. The two situations in particular, you have two loved ones who transition over. Sagittarius that's watching over you, that's helping you to process and move on from some things. You know, process and move on. Let me put these two cards together because... This card right here is attached to these two cards. Death cards are attached to Scorpio. And this is Scorpio's ruling planet, Pluto. We're going to get to those questions right now. So to help you tie all of this together. You're definitely, um, this Empress card is like somebody's creativity has grown from all the past judgments. So somebody, this is where you're saying, I'm delivering myself from people's opinions. Whether I, have, I assume they're harshly judging me or they have confirmed that they're harshly judging me, I don't care what anybody thinks. I have a legacy. I'm breaking cycles, chains, and curses, and that's what I'm focusing on. So somebody's knowledge of self has definitely increased. So here are the questions for the moon in Scorpio as you're going through this purging process, which doesn't feel good at all. The purging process for everybody can literally, a lot of people think they can have colds when their body is trying to purge to make room for a wealth of something that you prayed for. And I definitely see you getting your prayers answered here. So the first question for the moon in Scorpio is what are the stories of your ancestors, comma, your past lives? Past lives could have been the last job you worked on, um, Sagittarius. It could be the last romantic relationship, last friendship that ended. Those are things like, okay, that's your past life. That was a life before the moment you watching this video. It could have been five minutes ago as a part of your past life. The second question is, where do you need to go to heal your connection with your roots? The third question is, do you feel truly empowered in your relationships and career? The fourth question is, is there a deep trauma that you need to look at, heal, and release during this moon? And then last but not least is, who are the people, meaning the therapists, healers, and so on, who could help you to dive deeper, right? Who could help you to dive deeper? So yeah, so yeah, so... 
And that's what I'm saying. Like somebody is closing it out and saying, I'm, I'm on my throne. I'm adjusting my crown of, you know, pouring back into myself of my compassion. And you absolutely deserve it because sword wound energy, um, it's overthinking about things with your head and heart or at war with each other. You, you, somebody's running the risk of being their own Judas to themselves, right? And I don't want you all to do that. Uh, Sagittarius is like stand around and get a, 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 and adjust to people hurting you. Like source needs you to get away from that, right? World card, two situations in particular, closed out, airtight. You're moving forward, right? Something has been fulfilled and you're moving on. You're like, okay, I'm not gonna make myself look like a clown by continue talking about stuff, overthinking it, head and harder at war with each other. I'm done. I am completely done with this. Whatever it done is, right? Knight of Pentacles, you're a hardworking person and sources saying, um, but don't be, be, well, be conservative with the time that you're putting into something. Just focus on this uh, emotional wounding, remember the enemy, the emotions are at one of the lower, the uh, the second chakra, right? The, the feelings, right? Emotions. You're not letting anything cut into your joy anymore. Uh, it doesn't matter who it is, if it's family members, whoever. Here we have the queen of cups. This is what somebody saying. I need to be compassionate towards myself. I've gone through some hurts and pain and I need to focus on me. So if people think that's selfish Sagittarius, then oh well, then guess what? They didn't make it inside your vault door. Here we have the queen of swords. Um, and again, you're sitting on your throne, carefully vetting your thoughts, carefully vetting your thoughts. Here we have the four of cups. I definitely see somebody possibly sitting around kind of ruminating over some things, but guess what? And also the six of cups, four and six of cups. You have faith. I definitely see somebody in your prayer life and talking to source is like starting the process of forgiving yourself for overthinking things and letting something get you veered off path, right? But I also see Source answering your prayer by sending you very intelligent energies across your path that's going to help you to increase your creativity. That's where, that's on the other side of all this. It's like, okay, to help you to increase your creativity, where it's going to put a smile on your face because all of this overthinking right here is dehydrating, is like spiritually dehydrating and evaporating someone's creativity and can also cause you to cause your deem give life to your demons. Right. So if your demons is like when you get spiritually dehydrated and the moon swings through these signs, you start emotionally eating. That's where you get the because the moon is also connected to our our soul being fed too. right. So all this overthinking head and heart at war with each other, got on blindfolds, didn't see something coming. OK, it can cause you to go reach for those sugary snacks you haven't eaten in years or, you know, load up on whatever your demons are feasting on. And so source is saying, but when you decide, Hey, I'm going to go ahead and end the, because once it looks like once people recognize what your demons are and they know that how to, how to, um, how to irritate your demons with their words or their actions, source is saying all the, all, all a dev, the devil need is a willing host. If you all have ever seen the movie fallen and like it appeared, I mean, that, that's an older movie with Denzel Washington. It was a really, really good movie where um, that demon jumped from one host to the next. You don't know what that energy was going through to even host that demon. So that demon was walking through and Denzel Washington was walk, looking from one person to the next, trying to see where the demon had jumped into. And a lot of it is jumping into hurt and pain. Like that sword, the opening, there has to be an opening somewhere. You know, and so sources say when you close out the demon of um, emotions and when it comes to you being judged or harshly judged, that's when somebody got it. Like you have to be so delivered from people's opinions of you that um, if somebody assumes something about you, you have to be okay to just let it ride. Like, okay, well, you know, I don't need to confirm or deny anything. Like I give somebody an example of like when I'm doing readings here, Sagittarius, some people will assume that when I'm talking about hurt and pain, even though I'm looking at the cars, people can see the cars that I'm talking about myself, right? Or that I'm, I must be going through something where people may have judged me in the past. Not necessarily. I'm speaking to myself, but I'm also speaking to from whatever message a source is telling me. So if somebody puts a comment and says, oh, you must have gone through a lot of pain because all you talk about is pain, pain, pain. I'm reading the cards, right? 
everybody I feel like has gone through pain that you have to decide what's painful for one versus the other, you know, whatever. Everybody I feel like has been through some kind of a judgment. You go on a job interview and they choose somebody over you and they, you come back and say, well, can you give me some feedback as to why you chose another candidate? If you have been so harshly judged in your family, that could be devastating for you. To, if they just say, well, it was, it was just kind of like, you know, the colors that you wore in the, in the, interview um that you know it just doesn't align with our aesthetics in the office or you know that was you know that was very we had an incident it was triggering because the person who did x y and z had on those exact same colors and whatever or that's our competitive colors or whatever you may be like what (laughs) in the world would i have known that wearing that into an interview right but if you were under judgment from your own family or generationally it was some kind of judgment that you weren't good enough you weren't whatever enough or whatever that could be devastating before another person who may have experienced a different kind of judgment. They may like be okay, all right. <laughs> you know, well, God got something bigger for me on the next side. You know, that's not that's not their demon. So that's what Source is trying to help somebody with is like getting so delivered from people's opinions of you and just recognizing that you have purpose. Usually on the um, full card, there's like a you know, it's like a color of yellow or like a sunlight or whatever in the in the back. Um, and letting you know that you can move beyond, you can take the action to move beyond this, this situation, this very, somebody had a painful experience here. And that's what I'm saying for you all so that you can move beyond it. But that's what it really is. Like somebody feels like if they're judging you in terms of your intellect or your power, or in this case, because the majority of cars down here is money where you may feel like people are judging, you don't have enough money comparing somebody else. or you're not as smart as somebody Source is saying you are absolutely, everybody knows how smart Sagittarius is. Like you can't even, <laughs> you, you, uh, every, just everybody knows. Everybody knows how smart you are. Your family knows how smart you are. Your friends know how smart you are, Sagittarius. You just have to recognize that you're smart. Like you have to recognize that you have these, um, you know, you have emotions and not let, let uh, people see what your demons are. Right, because people poke and poke and poke and poke and poke. People poke and poke and poke. I can't even tell you how many times people have put negative comments under my videos. This is thank you, <laughs> thank you. Move on. Like okay, when you're operating from purpose, you know you're just saying thank you. You're, you're saying okay, all right. Well, thank you for your feedback. You know, and let me get back to purpose. I'm a cheerful giver to source, and um, and that's it. And I'm not just talking about me. I'm talking about you, Sagittarius. You're a cheerful giver. You are uh, fire signs. You move from your, um, that's you, Leo, Aries, move from your core, right? And so maybe after something, somebody is strengthening their core, like core strengthening exercise, washing off all of these wounds, these uh, starting the healing process, letting the air hit it, like doing the mirror work is what I'm seeing here, where you are speaking highly of yourself, like looking around and seeing your accomplishments, whether it's the degrees you got in school or... You survive judgment of your family because families can be ruthless, you know, when they're comparing this one to this one, you know, that you survive things, that you've accomplished things, that you went into the military or didn't go into the military or uh, moved to a certain zip code or was able to buy a car on your own and didn't get a um, and didn't get a co-signer. It's always you versus you. So that's what I'm saying here. You're already inside your vault door. And when you start looking at, looking at the cards here, you're looking at, okay, I'm living in a posture of gratitude instead of a posture of comparing, like living by other people's judgment. That's when you're creating, you're going to start saying, I'm giving birth to creativity in abundance. I'm giving birth to a creativity in, in abundance and I'm closing out cycles. I've already fulfilled. That's what the full card is. This is the beginning of the the full card in tarot would be the first card, even though it's zero. It's like, okay, I close out a cycle. I'm embarking on a new journey. And then the the magician card comes after that, which is the uh, messenger. What message, when I go in, what, what messages did I learn that Source wanted me to learn after I fulfilled, this is the, war, the uh, world card, after I fulfilled my uh, journey, after I close out that job, what did I learn about myself? After I close out that friendship and I'm embarking on a new journey, the full card, what what did I learn about myself? I, I, after I've closed out of a romantic relationship, friendship, job, assignment, whatever, 
what was the, it's like the best practices, you know, like, what did I learn about myself so I can move forward and not make those same mistakes again? Like, what did I learn about? So the sooner somebody can get to that, that's when the source is saying, and, and stay in the posture of gratitude. That's when sources say it's going to feel like all that time came back. All the time you poured into something comes back to you because I've learned lessons, right? And I don't have to be so emotionally dehydrated that I go back to, um, go back to feeding whatever my demons are. And there's just too many demons to name. So, you know, you know what it is. It's too many demons to name. So one person's demons may be chocolate cake. Another person's demons may be, you know, um, I don't know, going back to gossiping. I don't know, whatever. It's just too many demons to name, right? So 16, I am perceptive. One and six is seven. Seven is where source makes it make sense. The light side of the number seven is lightning bolt insights. Okay, now I know what it is. When I feel harshly judged, then then I give people the power to know what my demons are in my personal and my professional life. And so um, that's something that I can't let people see me sweat. So if that's the something when I feel like someone is harshly judging, you know, my my family or family line or where I came from, who I was raised by or whatever, then I have to go ahead and cut them off sooner. I don't just go along with the flow because it has a, it, it could cause a backdraft. So, um, but the dark side of the number seven is why keep asking why, 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 do, why, why don't I, why don't they get it? Why don't, why aren't they compassionate towards me? Right. Their level of compassion may be very different than your definition. So you have an inquisitive mind, Sagittarius, that allows you to uncover important truths. You have a special ability to read into other people's feelings, a wisdom seeker, and your angels ask to share your knowledge for the benefit of others. Number 16, so you don't have to ask why anymore. You don't have to ask why outside of yourself. You have to ask why inside yourself. Why does harsh judgment for people outside of me affect me the way that it does? From this point forward, Sagittarius, let's absorb that. It's not going to affect you anymore. You're too smart for this. You're too way too smart for this. It's not going to affect you from this point, this moment forward. So, um, or maybe perceived judgment. Because sometimes you perceive people to judge you based on anybody of any of us knows that if you've ever been in situations where <laughs> you've been in places where people turn their nose up at you, you like, who do these people think they are? <laughs> who do these people think they are? Like uh, you hear all the stories about people they they the first generation going to a boarding school or being accepted into a university or college with very rich students and stuff like that. And people are like, mm, what's your family last name? Who are you? You're like, well, who are you? I got on. And well, how did you, did you get on here on a scholarship or, you know, those kind of things, you know, that can be, that can, you know, and, um, invoke that, that spirit of that traumatic spirit, you know, but, Again, source is saying, stay firm in your purpose. You learn whatever lesson you needed to learn. Now it's time to move forward. Um, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see here. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see here. Earth worship. Number seven. Until my body is in your arms, I will worship you, dear mother of mine. And we're talking about mother earth, right? So this mother earth obviously is feminine energy. So... This is where you're saying, I'm going to Mother Earth to heal. Maybe hug a tree, maybe do some grounding, those kind of things. So when I feel like I'm under some kind of judgment from anything on this earth, no matter what it is, another human being, a dog, a cat, whatever, I know how to get rooted and grounded in this Mother Earth and just remember what I've accomplished and I'm breaking through cycles, chains, and curses. You know, like um, um, uh, Sagittarius, one person may think you're a failure at something. Like, for instance, you may be a person that says you come from a family where there's a lot of creativity. Maybe you're a singer, right? And for you, breaking through all of the chaos and confusion that creativity can bring until there's structure to it, you may be a person that says, hey, I just wanted to just get in front of a group of people and sing and I didn't, I, my, my goal was not to be, you know, like this star, you know, but I needed to, I need to find out what my purpose. And you may have heard a couple of people like, you need to stick with that. Your voice is very healing for people and so on and so forth. 
or some kind of artistic endeavor. You really heal people with your energy. Uh, and some people may count that as a failure because you weren't aspiring to be something. You Just a breakthrough, just a fear and doubt and judgment coming out of your own family makes you a star all into itself because guess what? It impacted one person's life. And that's what Source is trying to tell you is that everybody is a star. Everybody is a star. Um, and to just focus on your power in your intellect and what are you doing with your power and intellect to help change other people's lives. So get locked in and laser focused. That's it. Get locked in and laser focused. Get delivered from people's opinions of you because everybody has an opinion, but not everybody knows what their purpose is yet. People are learning what their purpose is and um, that's what I'm seeing for you. I allow my soul to lead the way. That's it, Sagittarius. You allow your soul to lead the way. That is what I have for you all. Um, questions for the moon and Scorpio. Questions for the moon and Scorpio. We're not talking about any Scorpios that you know. But questions for the moon and Scorpio. First question is, as you're allowing the moon and Scorpio to help you to dig deep after it moves from Libra, which is balanced, you know, if it's disrupting, if it's not adding to your peace, just remember this. If it's not adding to your peace, more than likely it's disrupting your peace. People, places, and things through your memory and those kind of things. Um, but when it moves into Scorpio, when the moon moves into Scorpio, it's going to dig real deep to give you an opportunity to do this, go through this powerful transformation of purging everything that's unhealthy and wounded, the emotions, right? So here's the first question. What are the stories of your ancestors, comma, your past lives? The second question is, where do you need to go to heal your connection with your roots? The third question is, do you feel truly empowered in your relationships and career? The fourth question is, is there a deep trauma that you need to look at and heal and release during this moon. And then last but not least, Sagittarius is who are the people, meaning the therapists, healers, and so on, who can help you to dive deeper, right? So I may have repeated those questions, but again, you know, we learn by repetition. So, so it's needs somebody to get locked in and laser focus on what's truly most important to you, where your head and heart are not war with each other. And it looks like your legacy and someone else's legacy and you know, not giving a whole lot of um, a whole lot of thought to anybody else's legacy. Um, you are already a compassionate person, so drink from your large cup of compassion for yourself with all the hurt that you've gone through. You know, Sagittarius, and just know good energy is being sent your way. Great energy, positive energy is being sent your way. That's what I have for you. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.